No, I don't waste no time. Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video it is hot as hell today in the netherlands it actually has been hot um all weekend and it's it's still hot today i've actually got the windows shut as well because there's roadworks outside and i've actually already recorded this video listen back to it hear the roadworks it's it, the just the quality just was really bad and i myself wouldn't even listen to it so let alone you guys so i'm re-recording this video again now with all the windows shut, so if you see me sweating halfway through this video, you know why. And in this video, uh, I actually do want to keep this short and to the point, um, but basically in this video, I want to discuss proposals and why, in my opinion, you should not send proposals to your potential social media marketing clients. I have learned this the hard way. What I used to do is I actually used to send proposals without even permission. So what I would do is I would send them a uh, an email audit, as so an audit on email with some ideas that I had for their socials. Again, they didn't ask for it. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes to make um, about their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram, etc. And then I also sent a proposal with what I could do for them and the price points. And, you know, it took me about... Uh, obviously the proposal it took me about an hour to make and then from that point onwards I could just copy and paste it but the order took me 15 minutes every single time so as you can see you know it's not a very efficient way of doing outreach um, and they get a proposal from something that they didn't ask for so they're not going to look at it you know they immediately see that you're asking for something you're literally you're standing there you know with your, your hand out waiting for them to accept the proposal and 100% of the times that I sent that proposal, I did not get a reply, let alone a positive one. So um, from there, I realized that, okay, sending proposals without them asking for it is a no-no. Again, I was young, naive, you know, this was back in 2016 when I was just starting out. Then what I started doing is I started emailing them uh, saying that I had some ideas for the social media marketing efforts. Is it okay if I send a proposal? Again, I've got a few more replies, a few more people saying, yeah, sure, send it over. I'd send the proposal, and then, again, I'd hear not and back from them. And again, same mistake. I'm sending something that they aren't really, you know, they're not asking for price points or anything like that. They just want to know, okay, what can I do for them? And if you're immediately showing, you know, your, your price points and your brackets, and I also had, like, packages, I had, like, different types of packages for what they could offer, um, or what I could offer. I think one was social media management, social media management and content creation so an actual video and in social media management content creation and i think it was like facebook ads 100 euros worth of facebook ads or something like that that was like my most expensive package at the time and again no replies no responses no clients and it wasn't actually until um well to be fair you know once i started uh, using freelancer websites etc i started to get a bit more traction but every single time i'll get on a call and a client would say to me okay sure sounds good if you could send over a proposal via email i'll take a look at it this evening or the rest you know sometime this week and i've never actually i've never landed a client after sending a proposal because when you send the proposal the ball's in their core right like they they literally can see all of your numbers they can compare your numbers and your figures and your rates to other agencies etc and you know yes some might say that you know it is transparent but nine times out of ten they will judge you on your price point and judge you on basically the proposal that you send and they'll just compare it to other people and more often than not they will go for the cheapest option so the next time your client or potential client i should say asks you for a proposal and you're on the call with them if um so quick side note if the person asks for a proposal via email so if you send out an email you send out an instagram dm you know depending on how you uh, do your outreach um if they reply to that saying sure send over your proposal or your rates then what you say is listen we don't have a set rate because in our eyes every client is different we don't offer one size fits all packages we actually you know create tailor packages uh, based on you know your needs so let's hop on a call and discuss further how if and how we can come in to help you and i always like to mention the if because that basically says to them that okay you know if this client is not able to help me then he will just admit it which i do you know if, if there are I've, there's been a few times where i've looked at the metrics i've looked at the data and the company is just too small whereas it just wouldn't be right like they could they are better spending the money from my retainer on ads and getting some kind of results uh, trying it out themselves first then 
spending like almost half their money on my retainer and having almost no budget for the ads. So, you know, at times like that, I'll just say, Look, guys, listen, it's not um, a right fit. It wouldn't be right if we were to work together at this moment. Maybe, you know, sometime in the near future, we could revisit this. But as of now, I don't think I can directly help you. And they'll always appreciate you for that. But if you admit that it's not a right fit, they'll they will, they will trust you more as well. Like they'll start, um, you've basically built all that relationship on the right foot. And then the next time they actually do have the budget for you or they are actually growing and you know, you're able to get more results for them, you help them win as way more, they'll come back to you because they know that when they thought they needed you, you admitted that no, it's not actually a right fit and it wouldn't be right for me to take your money. But anyway, um, moving on. So if you're on the call and the person says, okay, this sounds like a right fit, um, can you send me over a proposal and I'll take a look at the rest of the day. Then what you should say, and I've learned this from uh, Brandon. Uh, Brandon, see if you're watching this, shout out to you. He's a high ticket closer and he basically taught me this method and I've, I've been using it ever since. Um, and basically what he told me or advised me to do is to ask them, okay, what is it exactly that you are hoping to see from this proposal? And then they'll basically name the things that they want to see. And then what you can say, well, okay, well, that sounds good, but there's nothing that I can say in a proposal that I can't just tell you, you know, right now. So let's just discuss where we can actually come in and help you. And I'll explain um, what it is that we do. And I'll basically see if I can get you from point A to point B. Point A being the current situation, point B being obviously where they want to go, so their desired situation. And that way you are, again, positioning yourself as the authority figure. Um, you are keeping them on the call because usually if they say, okay, send a proposal, then the call's ended, right? And then they can just go off and do their thing. And it's easier to get a yes on a call than there is uh, via email or anything like that. Because you just need to think to yourself, if you cannot close the deal on the call, who's to say that, like, what what is a piece of paper gonna do? Like, you're definitely not gonna close them after the call with just a little piece of paper that says what you can do for them. Okay, so you need to try and get them on the call. And another thing that I've noticed over time as well is that you can build someone up on the call, right? So like, let's just say, like the emotional sort of commitment that they've got to you uh, starts here when you're on the call, they don't really know who you are, um, you know, it's cold. Then you start to explain a bit more about your business, you're asking questions, it goes lukewarm because the more they explain to you about their business, the more they feel that you know their business and the more they'll trust you for it, which is a random little um, like psychological hack. So the more they explain out their business, the more they start to trust you, the more uh, emotionally connected they get to you. And then this is the point where, you know, at the end of the call, and if you then say, okay, well, I'll send the proposal over, I'll do this or I'll do that, then they hang up the phone and then immediately that whole emotional connection and emotional commitment just goes down. Because then after that, like the, the out of the call, right, the out of that little zone that they were in, and then they start to think to themselves, you know, was this actually worth it? Is this actually worth the retainer that he just mentioned? Um, and then more often than not, you will lose a sale, which I have done countless times in the past as well. So by asking them, you know, um, or by actually saying to them, you know, listen, what is it exactly that you want to see from this proposal? And by saying to them, okay, well, you know, there's nothing that I can say on a piece of paper that I can't just tell you flat out, you know, here now on the call. And that's how you keep them on the call. You keep, you know, building up that emotional connection. And like I said, you'll be more likely to get the sale as well. And then yes, you know, the more corporate businesses will need a breakdown or a terms of agreements or anything like that after the call, but the proposal or the terms of agreement is not what is going to get you the close. So you need to close the clients on the call and then after the call is when you send your breakdown with your terms and basically what you can uh, do for the client, what the client can expect from you and what you expect from the client and so on and so forth, okay? So hope you got some out of this video, short and sweet. I just wanted to basically drive this home that no longer should you send proposals always say to the client what is it that you're hoping to get out of that proposal and then mention to them that you know there's nothing that um you can say in a proposal that you can't just say to them on the call so hope you got something out of this video hope you enjoyed it leave a comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you guys in the next video <laughs>